Clint Cosgrove, Rivals National Recruiting Analyst here with our other National Recruiting Ana Analyst, Eric Lommers, Coach's Corner, episode number four with a very special guest, Vincent Ginta, the, uh, was it, Senior Director of Player Personnel and Recruiting for the University of Nebraska Cornhuskers. Vince, thanks for coming on, my man. Oh, fired up to be here. Uh First podcast, fired up to talk recruiting, ball. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. <laughs> um, so, Eric, like you, uh, obviously, you've held a similar role to what Vince has right now. So, you know, you're more familiar with that side of things and uh, we'll be able to ask probably better questions. But just to start off, um, Vince, let's go over, uh, you know, we'll eventually get to our history, I guess. I've known Vince for a long time. We were on staff at Nebraska together back in the day. But um, you just came from Baylor. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, just tell me about that transition and what it was like, you know, shifting from Baylor to Nebraska and uh, really, you know, getting on the same page of everyone on staff and, you know, and, and getting Coach Frost's vision in place. Yeah. You know, I really uh... – you know, working with Coach Aranda and at the University at Baylor University was a great experience for me and my family. We really enjoyed our time there. Um, the opportunity to come back to Nebraska, um, we, where so much of my roots are here. You know, we talk about our history here, but so much I learned about this business and, and about big time college football comes back here. So it was such a cool opportunity uh, to come back here. So, you know, I got a chance to talk with Coach Frost. Um, you know, Coach Frost our, our, and, uh, you know, Matt Davison, who's a Husker legend. He's kind of the senior executive around here. He's a, a senior associate AD and, and also with the uh, talk a little, little bit with uh, Andrew Sims here, our DFO, just about, you know, uh, vision for recruiting, vision for personnel, vision for evaluation process, all that. And, and as we kind of talked about it, we, we figured out it might be a good fit and good time to come back here, you know, so. Um, you know, as we work through that, you know, they, they did a great job here finishing up and signed some, some, uh, you know, did a nice job closing out their class with some grad, uh, portal transfers and a couple of late high school guys that really put a, put an emphasis at the end. And, and now just with me here, you know, my, my main role here is to put coach Frost vision of what he wants the football team to look like um you know physically but more character wise and 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 how we put that into play and, and then how that moves forward in the new landscape of college football and how do we build our team in that image that he wants yeah so like you speak of new landscape of college football yeah. obviously a lot has changed um since we were together there and uh yeah. But I was there the 2006 season, but what, you were there 2004 to 2009? Yeah, uh, eight was my last year here. And uh, yeah, uh, so much has changed, you know. Um, some things don't change, right? You know, um, when I look at, you know, what we're doing now, I mean, this is always still in the recruiting side of things, it's always going to be a relationship and customer service business and just connecting with people. But the way that you connect with them and the means to get them here, right, and, and how much more access they have to what we're doing now um, and, and how many more people are on campus, you know, um, than have ever been, you know, through spring ball and, and the visits and the, the portal visits. It's like it's year round now. So they, they give us this recruiting calendar. And I mean, basically, it basically says, well, you get a, it's basically a couple of weeks in July that about wraps her up, right? <laughs> and maybe Christmas to New Year's. The rest of it is like, it's full go. So that's, that's a big change, you know, over the, definitely from when we were here. All right. We talked about that uh, actually back a couple, of, it was either first episode or second episode, Clint, the, the, the calendar and just how much it consumes now of the time of these yeah. coaches and the personnel staffs and the support staff. And, you know, how do you, I mean, you almost have to dial it back maybe a little bit. I mean, find ways to dial it back. I know they're trying to put different uh, deadlines in place yeah. with the portal and, and different things like that to try and do all that. But 
I think you're getting to a point where, like you said, it is almost year round. And I don't necessarily know if that was, you know, I feel like, and maybe I, this is a, maybe you don't agree with this and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it, but I feel, I feel like because of the calendar and put, because of the emphasis that's being put on recruiting basically year round, like you said, portal guys or high school guys, whatever it may be, we're seeing some exodus of people out of the game, right? Whether that's yeah. going to the NFL or going into the private world. I mean, do you think that that is something that they need to look at need to potentially, you know, possibly address, you know, that the overall calendar and how that, how it all looks? There's no doubt about it. Uh, I was just having a conversation this morning with a couple of our staff members and, and yeah, I mean, you will see, you're going to see an exodus and, you know, we are very blessed to do what we're doing, right? This, this opportunity to work at these type of institutions and, and get to meet the families and help the, the, the players that we do with, you know, really live out their dreams. That is really awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have families too, right. (laughs) You know? We have families too. I got two little ones at home, right? We're talking about how I'm going to be able to make it to a birthday party in May for my son on a Saturday when we've got four official visitors going, right? And uh, yeah, I feel like um, you know that that balance has to be there because at the end of the day, this is still college athletics, you know. This and it's funny because I feel like the NFL figured out their calendar probably better than we did from what you know. So right. maybe we could learn more from them in that regard. There's probably a few things we're going to end up needing to learn from them. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially the, the way things are beginning to go. Um, right. no about it. It's like NFL junior. Uh, have you figured out how you're going to make it to your son's birthday? As crazy as that sounds like right. you know, in most jobs and it's a Saturday as well. So yep. that shouldn't be an issue. Right. Like, <laughs> How do you do that with four official visits? Right. Um, you really, you you have a, a coaching staff that understands, right? That cares. And that's one of the awesome things about working at Nebraska and for Coach Frost is this is a family first program. Family is important. Um, so, you know, those type of things you can, you can, as long as you can get them covered and make a good plan, you can do them, you know? And, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to slide out and, uh, and keep my phone with me and try to be a dad for four hours and then, you know, floor it back here and, and get back to it. You know, it's all about the people around you, who you surround yourself with. And obviously you got to trust your support staff around you and different things okay. like that to handle you when you get around. But I mean, like, cause like we talked about it. Um, you know, I think there's such a pressure on recruiting, right. And that, yeah. they, and everybody feels that, that you have to do it year round. Cause if you're not talking to these kids or if you're not hosting these kids, others are right. And there's, they, you almost get a little bit of paranoia in it. Right. But I think if you would talk to the entire landscape of college football, if you would, if you would talk to a bunch of coaches, a bunch of personnel staff members, I mean, like you said, you hit the nail on the head, they're family men, right? I mean, this is an addicting profession, right? You, you mentioned it. We love, you know, you love being a part of it. You love what it can do. But the, at the end of the time, there is some sort of balance that has to be found between your own personal life and what's going on you know, yeah. with work. There so, is, there is. So, um, you know, and I, I think as long as it's with anything in life is you, you, you find a way to get it done um, or you, you don't find a way to get it done, but, I'll tell you what, when it, at the end of the day, if you ask me if I want to be good at my job or a good dad, I want to be a good dad first. Sure. Exactly. exactly. So. And, uh, and and that's part of what we want to do with this podcast is, you know, show the human side of, you know, like you're yeah. real people. Like right. you might get ripped on a message board and people will be like, oh, they make this much money. They can deal with it. Yeah. At the end of the day, like priorities, family. I mean, now I understand you have your Nebraska family and your yep. personal family, but yep. uh, you know, when you go to your grave, it's 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 you're not doing it. Hopefully, in the office, you know. Right. No doubt. Well, it's cool if we can figure out a way to you know to make it all work, and and we, and that's what's like I said. That's what's neat about here is I feel like we can live that life here at Nebraska. Um, you know, uh, it's funny you say go to your grave, man, because at the end of the day, you, people just remember you for, for how you made them feel. You know, they don't remember you for how much money you made or what your job title was, you know, whether that's recruits or whether that's your own friends and family. When they're talking about you, they're just going to talk about how they felt, how you made them feel. And and I think that's kind of the essence of, of like recruiting in a way, too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you read uh, this is still like the the on campus visits are still so important and and connecting with people and and how you make them feel like do you care about what they care about and and are you at that level with them you know and so I think they feel now and that when they come here they can feel that family feel here I really do yeah uh, you know you talk about uh, well family and uh, you know I want to get into your background but this just brought me to a point that uh, you know at, at, I don't know if it was after Nebraska or after another mm -hmm. school but you got out of football for a little bit. That's right. I did. Um, tell me about that decision, what you learned when you were outside of football, and what brought you back. Well, that's a good question. Uh, well, part of it was definitely family. You know, if you look at the timing, like that was right around the time of like um, the economy was like crazy good and, and all of a sudden started to tank, right? The housing market and all that. So I had an opportunity to help my family. Um, through that time and you know we were we, we were uh, transitioning we had transitioned from coaching staff you know with coach Callahan's staff and then got to really blessed to work with coach Osborne there um, as the interim coach and then to work with coach Polini who was great um, you know but this opportunity came up to help my family you know in in and business and and I got to go back I helped my family and it was like all these things it was like it was meant to be i met my wife a year later right you um, outkicked your coverage on that one there's no doubt, there's <laughs> no doubt. um you know uh that you're just number one recruit of all time right that's what all recruiting guys say too right Shut that's up. why you keep on getting jobs everyone's like look what he pulled off think <laughs> about what he can do here <laughs> hey you know, I just, uh, yeah, very, very lucky in that regard, Emily. And, and uh, hopefully, you know, we talk about like work-life balance and, you know, what we do and, and, and being in and out of football. Like she's really good at her job too. So maybe one day I might end up being a house husband too. That's, that's the that's other role. Dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. But, so, so you met your wife when you went, uh, when you stepped away from football. Yeah, Absolutely. And then a few years later, you came back into football. Yeah, and it was her idea, partially okay. her idea. Um, Until really. she found out what it entailed. <laughs> it was fun, you know, before you had kids, it was a little bit easier, you know, but, you know, it was awesome day. Uh, so business was going much better. We had kind of found our footing and, and business was going good. And um, I had a lot of friends and, 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 the mutual friends there with Clint um, that were coaching at Utah State. I was living in Salt Lake City. And we went up to watch um, this game, and Gary Anderson is the head coach, and and our friend uh, Kevin Kloon was on the staff, and, and Kevin Kloon is a dear friend of mine. He's at BYU now. Um, so we went up, and, and we were on the sideline, and, and with and Kloon and, and Coach Bill Bush were there, and, and they're playing BYU, right? That's their big rival. And my wife looks over, she is my girlfriend at the time. She looks over at me and she says, remind me why you're not doing this, right? <laughs> remind me why you're not. And we were, it was a huge upset, right? Huge weekend for Utah State. You know, Bobby Wagner had a huge game and, you know, and it was like, that was the blessing that was like, okay, you can start picking up the phone and calling your buddies <laughs> again and see who might hire you, you know? Um, so, so I wouldn't be here today if she wouldn't have said that on the sideline at, in Logan, Utah in 2011, you know, 2010. That's oh, incredible. That's real. That's real. And she, is she from Utah originally? Yeah, she's from Utah. Well, like her family's all from England, which is cool. Um, England and Utah. Yeah. And which is awesome because it expanded my horizons. You know, I was, I was never like a, I'm not a huge soccer fan, but like, I support the sport now, right? I'm into oh, it. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I was over actually visiting her family in England during the, the World Cup a couple of years, a few years back when England made that run and got to watch the games in a pub in England, like wild stuff. Right? It's coming home. Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> exactly. Football's coming home. I mean, we say it, we turn the video on, you know, you hear that music in the back at our house. And me and, me and my little guy, Max, we, when we kick the football around all the time. We have a real football from England with the three lions. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So that kind of how it came around and, 
And yeah, she's awesome. She's very supportive of being back in it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So did, did you go to, you went, where'd you end up going first? Was it Utah State? No, um, you know, it was kind of a, a crazy world. You know, when, when Clint, when you and I were here back in the day, we worked with Coach Cassie, Tim Cassie, you know, Big Daddy, the legend, right? He's a god. So he he had some some friends, some mutual friends on the staff that he was at at AM. And he actually introduced me to uh, Tim DeRuder. And oh, I was yeah. able to go with Coach DeRuder to Fresno State. Um, and and you want to talk about, okay, so Tim DeRuder is a world class guy, right? Just a great He's amazing. Dude. Yeah, just a great dude. So we get there, and our quarterback is Derek Carr. Right. And you got uh Devontae Adams. Right. So you got Devontae Adams on one side, you know, and just talent crazy. The number one wrist uh running back in the league is on our team, the number one tight ends on our team. You got Philip Thomas there that should have won the the uh, Thorpe Award that year, was the runner up for it. You know, you had uh Duran Smith on the other safety who who was a you know a draft pick like that team was unbelievable to walk into. Um, it's a testament to Pat Hill and the teams that he that he put together there at Fresno. Um, but man, you want to talk about? I think that team, like that offense. Uh, I mean, we could have rolled. We would. We, I mean, that team is on, offensively as good as any team that I've ever been on. Like unbelievable talent. So that was fun. That's how, and that's how I jumped back in. And then uh, Gary uh, Anderson got the job at Wisconsin. So all those. Utah State guys that ended up going to Wisconsin. And then that's when we got back together. And that's when me and Clint patrolled the sideline at Camp Randall a couple that's times. That's right. That's right. You know what? You talk about uh, people remembering how uh, how you make them feel. Like, yeah. you're one of those guys, Vince. Like, whenever you're around you, it's like, this guy's amazing. Oh, like, shit. No, it's like, you roll out the red carpet. Um, you know, I remember, you know, we had worked together because I was doing the scouting thing and, you know, you were at Wisconsin and uh, we come up for a game and, you know, get Vince. Vince has sends a packet with, you know, the sideline passes, like all of this stuff. I brought my wife. I think that was her first time. That's another out kicking of coverage, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, no question. <laughs> No question, man. Yeah. Uh, that, and that's when I first met your wife. And yeah. uh, we all hit it off and had a great time. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was special. And <laughs> it was for a game against Nebraska, which is funny. Right. Everything yeah. comes full circle. It does. Yeah. So. I like to see the pictures of you in your Wisconsin uniform when you're playing there. Uh, dude, I, um, you know what? I wish we would have pre-gotten them. Uh, I was like 100... <laughs> I think my playing weight was like 168. <laughs> I was the second lightest guy on the team. Um, I was like skin and bones. And uh, yeah, no. You did run though. My, like, let's not get it twisted. You had some speed. That That's all I had. Um, and uh, your desire, I, speed and desire, I would say. Speed, speed and desire. desire. <laughs> I didn't have never desire, ever had any, desire I didn't in the brothers process. anymore, though. <laughs> um, so uh, we've kind of, you know, then you went from Wisconsin, then you left with Anderson, went to Oregon State. Yep. Uh, then it was it to Baylor from Oregon yeah, State? Yeah, Baylor from Oregon State. It was really cool, though. You know, Corval is a, a, a beautiful little community in Oregon. And, you know, we had our first son there. We spent five really good years. And, you know, some of them were hard. You know, the, not all the winning was there that you wanted. But – to leave there the way that we did um, with Coach Smith, Jonathan Smith is another world-class guy, right? He's an awesome guy and so intelligent and, and has such great understanding of, of what it takes at the pro that program, you know, because he was such a good player there and um, and has a good plan. So I was really proud to, to leave Oregon State having learned from him and been a part of, of seeing that team go from, a, you know, a one-win team to a, to a bowl team, you know, to a team that was beating people, you know, beating USC, beating Utah, beating, you know, beating teams that two years before we were losing to by 50, right? Um, and and being part of that. And I learned a lot from him. And so, uh, you know, 
you know, Coach Aranda and I, you know, I sort of worked at Wisconsin together. So that was a that was a hard choice. I probably would never have left if if Coach Aranda wouldn't have gotten that. It wouldn't have been him. I don't think I ever would have left Oregon State because uh, it was just a, a great place to work, and and, a, and Coach Smith had made it in a good environment there. Um, yeah, so ended up in Texas, and you know, here we are. Right. Two years. Got ago. your cowboy boots on when you got to Texas. Um, you know, I, I retired my cowboy boots. Um, in if you saw me in college, I kind of looked like a my uh, like a Hawaiian shirt with cowboy boots, right? <laughs> kind of like a Van Wilder meets a football guy, you know, kind of a scene. Um, much like you, I think you know, I think I might have taken me five and a half years to graduate, maybe even pushed into the sixth. I don't remember, right? I had a great time doing football and uh, and college. But after college, I uh, I didn't I haven't really worn my boots much since then, even in Texas. Texas is great though because it's like the home of Crocs and Hey Dudes, right? Really? Yeah. So I mean, you just wear your dress Hey Dudes when you go out. You know, you don't have to wear your boots. Yeah, we uh, we talked with uh, our uh, our last guest about about cowboy boots versus yeah. Jordans and. Uh, the obsession with college coaches and cowboy boots. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm my own guy too. You know, I, I would be barefoot if I could be. You're gonna catch me in in various shoes that allow me to not wear socks. <laughs> you know, um, you know, you might catch me in a boat shoe one day. You know, you might catch me in a, in in you know some Adidas, uh, maybe some Yeezys with no socks on. You know, but they're they're not very easy to get now, Yeezys. Well, you guys easy. got a huge uh, contract. I'm sure you can get some Yeezys. Uh, I, you got to know somebody that knows somebody to get those things. That that's a you got to be deeply connected for that. So does Coach Frost rock the Yeezys? He does, man. Coach Frost, man, he's got it kind of all going on. He's got the Yeezys. He's got you know he's. I mean, he looks like he could still play. I mean, you see him on you know I don't know if he's notice on a sideline but he's a big athletic dude right and played in the league and all that so yeah but he he rocks the Yeezys and like a lot of us we're talking coaches fashion right is you know you got your Lululemon pants on right that's standard issue right standard issue uh every day I've got four pair of Lululemons they're on rotation right light gray dark gray black tan repeat right <laughs> hooded sweatshirt hooded sweatshirt uh, if we got to get real dressed up, get a, a quarter zip, right? Oh, yeah. And that's it. You know, when, you know, back in the day, it was like uh, uh, flat front pants, you know, dress shoes, button down, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what we talked about. We talked about that. I mean, you talk about your the, the wardrobe, right? And and then and working in the football environment. And again, another thing we talked about, like, that's why it's you'll never find another working environment, really, like a college football office no right? doubt, and like what you're able to wear, what you're able to, you know, you're listening to music and things like that. I mean, that's part of the addicting part of it all, I no guess. Question. Cause you say when you go into the real world and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, I got to dress up every day when I go into the office and I got to do what, but that's a, yeah. it's, it's interesting. The camaraderie is the camaraderie that you feel when you, that's the one I know is about being in the real world is that, you know, you know, I was in a management role, but like, uh, and and I had great people that I worked with, but you just don't feel the top to bottom of everybody in the building, whether that's the 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 janitorial staff, you know, whether that's the facility staff, whether it's the people that work in in you know concessions. Everybody's on the same page and wants the team to do well, and that's what's fun about coming to work. Right. Every, yeah. Everybody's working for that brand. Everybody wants to see that brand, that logo succeed. Yeah. It, I mean, that is your, that's spot on take right there for sure. And it's and, no bigger than, uh, you know, right there in Nebraska. No doubt. And you live it, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's, you, you ask people what they do around here and, um, you know, they'll tell you like, I, I, I help the team, right. I, I help the team and no matter what your job is here, you know, they're not going to tell you, you know, I, 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 you know, I paint the walls or, you know, I, I water the plants. No, I help the team. Right. I'm yeah, a 
that's what they say here that's what you know that's why people are here so long when i walked in this building um for the first time in 15 years i knew the first four people i saw <laughs> that's and wild they, they all leave right because yeah. it's such a cool spot you know yeah um and you know part of winning and i think we all know this is everybody's got to be on the same page like if there's a disconnect between literally any part of this fully functioning team from top to bottom like it can ruin everything no question and and that's one of the biggest battles especially with new people coming in um you know and i can't remember uh before we had technical difficulties if we had talked about this part yet but uh the transition of you coming from baylor mm -hmm. to nebraska um tell me about that transition and uh you know getting on the same page and just uh and then i'm sure eric you'll have some good follow-up questions on that right well i think the big thing you know as as when the opportunity came to come here um you know it came through talking to some of the you know executive staff here um and you know we talked about vision and and you know the this role that they were looking to fill here and you know it just we just were really blessed that it kind of aligned in kind of the things that i believe in and i've learned over the last few years and kind of what they were looking for here you know and um, and so you know we were able to to get up here pretty quick you know and and um, got up here right after signing day they finished really strong with some really cool signees i think you know um you know through the portal and through some some great high school signees here um and then hit the ground running when we got here you know i needed i i had to meet all the assistant coaches except for bill bush i i had met and then obviously bear root played when i was here right oh yeah so, Barrett's on staff. Yeah, Barrett, Barrett roots our linebacker coach and i mean he's the all-time leading tackler in the history of nebraska football so you you know he was good at football right uh so that's cool yeah so i knew barrett and and you know uh a couple of the other guys uh but for the most part it was a, a learning experience but everybody's been great here um and like i said my job is to put coaches vision into play and so if that means one day i might be spending more time with the on-campus recruiting staff you know and focusing on that then i'll be there um, you know, or if I'm spending more time with, uh, you know, Sean, we have a really, a really outstanding director of player personnel, Sean Dillon. I mean, that guy watches so much film, you know, and he cranks through it. He knows every kid in the country. So, you know, if I'm working with him and, and my job is with those guys is just, is to make their job easier, right? I'm a support, uh, advocate. I'm a, I'm a servant leader for them. I was just going to say servant leader. Servant leader, yeah. And so you mentioned it kind of a little bit, right? I mean, the, the ultimately the role of the head coach, you know, you talk about being a CEO of an organization, right, or a general manager you know, of an organization, something like that, right? And, and so, like, he wants to put his vision in play through you, yep. right? How – and then how is the, like, I guess the go be, the go between between you both? Like, if you have an idea that maybe you think – maybe this should be the way we do things, or maybe this is, you know, have we thought about this? Like, right. how does, how did you guys get to that point in your relationship where you guys feel like you can kind of bounce things off of each other almost? Um, well, I'll tell you, I think the first thing is uh, that coach is very humble and doesn't have a big ego. And he is a, he's a listener, right? And, and he wants new information, you know, and he wants, he's in a, in a mode of trying to, push forward and do new things and, and do things better and and do things with a greater, deeper purpose. So I think the mission is united in that. And so he doesn't, you know, what's cool is working with someone like that where they don't put up barriers to our, our, our own development. You know, I think a lot of times people put up roadblocks to themselves, right? Sure. They get caught in, this is what we've always done or yep. this is how they did it when I was here. Um, you can't do that in college football anymore because it ain't the same game it was five years ago. No. Right? Yeah. And so if you did this, you know, and, and this is what how you, you know, how you went about your say your this was your offer process five years ago, you it can't be the same today, right? Mm -hmm. 
Right. Um, Constantly. You have to be able, yeah, you have to be evolving and things. Yeah. Because like you said, it's changing. Everything's changing. And I mean, that is a, a, what you just said there is a classic. Like that's a like quicksand to fall into it. Right. As you say, well, this is how we've always done it. Or, you know, this is just how, you know, how I learned to do it. And this is my kind of my way. I mean, if you're not evolving, you know, you're kind of going to be, you know, left behind, I guess. No doubt. And I mean, this is, is you look in the office and you know, that my director senior, I'm like, I'm the senior citizen, right? At 43 years old, way (laughs) older than everybody else. Right. We were the young guys back in the day. Right. We were the young guys, right? We were the ones, you know, causing problems all over, you know, Nebraska when we were here before we were the young guys, you know? Um, You know, so I feel, you know, obviously a different perspective, but, um, you know, I, I, that's what I want to do is, is part of the cool thing about being back here again, though, is, is learning new, new things, you know, but again, like I said, the more things change, there are some things that always stay the same. Sure. And I feel like that's what I learned to get me back here. Like your core, like that's where I feel like my core, you know, has really developed now and, and how, how I, you know, I view the importance of certain things versus other things, you know, and being a father too, has, I think has made my, my experience to be able to serve the families better, you know, cause I got that different perspective now. Okay. Than I yeah. Yeah. Like uh, birthdays on Saturday visit weekend. Exactly. I spend, you know, I get, I, now I'm an old guy. So now I'm like, I really connect. I can connect with the parents now. Right. I know the kids. I like, <laughs> like, like, like chop it up. But I can't tell you who who the big rappers are right now, right? <laughs> I, I don't, what happened to I you, know. Vince? Huh? What happened to you, Vince? We used to be roommates. You had to listen to my loud rap music no. all the time, man. You were loud. I was always kind of a little more like mature. Maybe. Oh, like, what are you that, trying to say here? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> this, that actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, I would listen upstairs. You know, I was in the basement, you know. Clint had this beautiful suite upstairs and cool house, you know, and I had this little basement deal and just gong, gong, and it would be loud and um, but it was fun. Gosh, Jägermeister, loud music. Uh, just living yeah. the dream. I'll let you know. You can keep, go, go on. I, I'm, I'm not confirming. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm a uh, story stop there. Um, but uh, how about, um, you know, second tour of duty at Nebraska, where mm-hmm. you started. Um, so go over, I guess, kind of how you started at Nebraska and mm-hmm. then how much have things changed from when we were there together mm-hmm. in like 2006 yeah. to now, obviously, you know, the, the rules and just right. the recruiting goes as well, you know, how it was, you know, how you get here. So, um, I was going to be a really bad walk on at the university of Utah. Right. I was going to be a, a, I was a, a long snapper and, and my college was going to be, you know, trying to go to college and be a long snapper. Right. But my first personnel decision was to call a head coach, uh, coach McBride and, and tell him, you know, I, I, I don't think that playing anymore is going to be right for me, you know, um, but I love football and, I grew up in Utah. I grew up a Utah fan, right? I bled, lived and died red. And, um, and, but I said, but I love to be around it. Right. So he called me a couple of weeks later and, you know, he said, how about I give you a scholarship to work in the office and you're going to be primarily the video guy, but you're going to help with everything else. And that was in 1997. Right. And, so that's how I got into football, right? Staff wise, right? Um, and uh, yeah, and I never would have been the snapper at Utah. There was always somebody that would have been way better than me, right? So that ended up being great. And one of the cool things was getting to be around a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, I was there and met a lot of great coaches, obviously. And, and Coach Winningham is actually still there. Um, he was He was my boss for a lot of those years. Um, but that's where I met Coach Bush, who's on our staff here. And he was one of the, you know, one of the first few guys that Coach Callahan, I think, hired to come on the staff here um, in 2004. And so he recommended me for a job 
here at Nebraska. And that's how I got here was through that recommendation. And he said, I was working for Clint's dad and, uh, and, and Bill Bush doing special teams and defense. And, and, uh, um, you know, I always loved the recruiting side. So at, like at Utah even, so we would do the season and then back in the day, like, okay, it's December. Now is time to recruit right. <laughs> Never recruited all year. So now December is recruiting time. I always loved recruiting time right? More than I liked the rest of the year. And then I liked June because that's when we had our football camp. So I liked that more, right? Than spring football. So that's, that's definitely why I gravitated towards this side. Um, yeah. And so once that first recruiting kind of cycle started and, and I got to get involved in recruiting operations and that's kind of went that direction. Um, you know, uh, it was really cool and got some great opportunities, but you know, Clint's dad is a, such a good dude and was fun to work for. And if you meet him, he's kind of scary at first, right? He think he's like a, uh, like you would think he's like an Irish mobster, you know, from the South side of Chicago. Uh, but then you meet him and he's just the nicest dude in the world. And, and so it was a, it was a blast to work for him and, and then, and then kind of transition from there. Nice. And you say, and you talked about, uh, just the, when you got started, right and you start and you saying you're balancing all these different uh like responsibilities that you taught sound like what was like and we talked about the staff sizes and how they've kind of evolved yeah. from there and so like when you were first started even it was a utah or nebraska like talk to us what was the staff sizes then compared to what they are today and like the responsibilities and things like that how right. did that all how well, that all utah, changed yeah utah was crazy so if they there was they had a dfo and a secretary an administrative assistant um, and, and that was it for full-time support staff members. Right. And then you had two GAs and then you had, um, the, the guys that did video, right. The two or three guys that were, that did video and that was it. That's all she wrote. Run the, run a, run a power five program with that now today. Four right? GAs. I know there was probably a lot put on them. Poor you too. Yeah. It was <laughs> probably crazy. learned a lot though. <laughs> learned a lot you know and you know i obviously matured a lot during that time you know uh definitely grew up during that time bad fun the whole time that's for sure but uh no and then there was some crazy times too because you know um the coaching limitations were different back then too there was only nine coaches sure and so there was a, I, you know there was a couple of years where we had an extra coach on defense uh excuse excuse me the extra coach was on offense um, for the GAs and, and the defense had the extra full-time coach. And so I got to help out as an undergrad, you know, more with the defense. And that's where, you know, I was doing their scout, you know, some scouting reports like an analyst would do now. Um, and how cool was that to do that with Kyle Whittingham when you're, you know, 20 years old and, you know, and that was really neat. And his, one of the, one of the great coaches that I got to work with, in my career is, is actually Fred Whittingham, who's a Kyle Whittingham's uh, father. He he passed away a few years ago. He was a he was a, a one of a kind character, and uh, it was really cool to work with him. That Utah really neat. Uh, he had you know he had been in the NFL and a few different spots, but so that's kind of cutting your teeth. That was it. That was all that was in the room. And then even at Nebraska when we got here, like Clint, I think like Clint was you were probably like the first like quality control ever hired here right uh yeah well baldus was there right before me but like hey, baldus yeah baldy um yeah that uh but like you know callahan had come from the nfl and there really weren't like quality controls in college football at that point like i remember it was hard they had to hire us through like the video department or yeah. something like they had to pull strings in order. And and now, you know, these big time teams, they have, you know, a hundred different analysts and stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, what's your personnel uh, department? Well, we're uh, growing. You know, yeah, we're growing here. Um, you know, we have, we kind of, now we're structuring, you know, we're structured to have a personnel side and a recruiting side. Um, you know, we have uh, um, people that focus their attention on, the the portal you know we have a, you know people for that 
have a couple of folks that, you know, focus their attention on evaluations and relationship building. You know, when we were here, Clint, before, it was actually illegal compliance wise for me to put an evaluation in on a kid. I do think that's about that. Insane. That didn't that's even insane. change until like 2015 or 16 yeah. or something like that. I would have to very carefully write like, uh, I could write how big they were and be like, might be an offer candidate. That was about as extensive as the, the evaluation could be within the rules. Big. Yeah. Looks like he could play football. Right. Yes. Take a look. <laughs> Obviously larger than everyone else. And, and, and then that's it. But you can't describe if he was faster because then now you're evaluating. Right. Yeah, that, that's an evaluation. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. So that was like that for a long time. And, uh, um, you know, we also have, we, hopefully we get here, we, we, we have our new director of recruiting here hired in the next few days. Um, and then a few other spots that we're, we're, we're going to hire, um, you know, then they focus on the recruiting process and then the on-campus recruiting process. So, you know, and it's all said and done, you know, probably have a you know, dozen or so people running around here, plus, uh, a student, a team of student workers. And essentially, it's, you, know, you are managing a lot of those people, right? So now, because uh, like that's your kind of, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but kind of your role to make sure that everybody's, again, flowing in the right direction of the vision of the head man. Right. right? And so exactly. that, that's kind of how, you know, you're managing people in that because, you know, I've, I've had conversations with people in the past uh, as these staff sizes continue to grow. And I say, you know, at times you can get, there's almost too many cooks in the kitchen, Right. If you've got too many people that are talking at once and you can't make a decision because at some, at some point somebody's got to make a decision and you've got to right. live with that. Right. right. And so you can get to that point where, you know, again, too many cooks in the kitchen. But when you got a guy like yourself who's, you know, speaking from the head man's vision, like this is it. This is what we're doing and this is how it's right. got to go. It helps kind of eliminate some of that, I guess, if you will. Right. Well, there's two things I think you look at that that bring it all together and again it's learning from people that have done it whether that was at the nfl level or did it well in college and that the two things you fall back on are process and creating processes and sticking to them right and if you can that's something that you can how you can live right you can live and that's the framework and you can train in the process and no matter that what that is right and that that varies from coach to coach and 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 you know how that evaluation process works and how the recruiting process works but you if you have a a, a solid process foundation that's where you can live in that and and that's how you keep all those people cohered and then the other thing is you know was, i got to work with uh at baylor i got to work with uh, dennis polian you know bill polian's one of bill polian's son dennis a character too he's, he's quite a guy you know and Dennis one day had got his, uh, his father came to, um, visit and got to spend some time listening to him. And one of the, the big quotes, you know, that he take away from that was, well, how does that further the cause of winning? Right. And I think, I think that when you think about, you no, know, when you get that many people together, that's where like opinions start coming out and maybe, maybe we should be doing this or, or my ego is this check it. How does what you're saying further the cause of us winning? Yeah. Right? Exactly. That's like such a simple, simple phrase, but it has so much value. Yeah. Is is what you're doing helping us win? Yeah. Or is it doing nothing? Or is it actually going against what we're trying to do? Exactly. Exactly. And uh, you talk about, um, you know, everybody in the building being on the same page. Like if you ask them what they do and they're the painter, they're right. not the painter. They're helping the team. Right. And that's the biggest battle is getting everybody on the same page, checking egos, even though there's a lot of great ideas and you can, you know, you, you can hear them out and you can explore different things. But like you go back to is is that helping us win? Is that helping mm -hmm. us get to where we are yeah. um, now that you have these processes, you know, in place and obviously you're new, so they're evolving and, and you know, everything's going to come together. Does that give you more time or does it, uh, I'm talking work life balance wise, like, right. you know, does it, does it give you more freedom or are you constantly like, whether you're in or out, you're 
you know, making sure that somebody else is doing their job. Like, could you right. just go out and like, when we went on our week long, you know, houseboat trip, uh, right. what was that, Lake Mead? Lake Powell. Lake Powell, yeah. Lake Powell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the varsity was, version of Lake Mead. Lake Mead is a very much junior version of Lake Powell. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, a, a week on a houseboat together, you learn a lot Not about really. it. Uh, Tim Cassidy was there too, but like, you know, obviously there's set times for vacation and but also as you say this recruiting calendar is uh, it's almost like too much like it, it's just it never stops there's too much communication mm -hmm. there's all kinds of different variables coming into play now um does having a bigger staff who is assigned you know jobs that maybe one person did you know like we talk about original time in nebraska mm -hmm. you know i'm doing the scouting report then i'm doing special teams then yeah. i'm doing coverage adjustments mm -hmm. like you know, you never knew what was coming next. Has it overcomplicated things or has it made it th made things easier? It made you able to do this, the, the smaller things to a greater level of detail. Um, and you can do things um, at, at, a, at a higher level of analysis. And, you know, hopefully the, the little things that you do are increased in in their magnitude and, and so what i mean like that is you know remember Clint, if like we were going to have a recruiting weekend we would meet on friday mornings and i would have a packet put together yep. and it was typed up in word you know I probably still have some of them right and and you know I, I had the coach cassidy matrix that you know that he had us use and and all that but if you looked at the packet today that gets handed out versus the packet that got handed out 15 years ago, it's like dramatically different, right? The, the layers of detail, the amount of information the, 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 you know, the, whether that be the confirmed measurements that came through like, you know, camps and combines or whether that be the really like multiple layers of personal information that we're finding out now. I mean, cause we're more, you know, we're so much more into character and background now than you were back then um and so so that's different you know you look at the books like when people go out on the road recruiting you know you don't just hand them a book that you bought from some scouting service anymore now we make that book for mm -hmm. them right and that yeah. book detail with our evaluations in it not some scouting services evaluation not you like my evaluations then you, well your evaluations are top notch there's no question about it but you know, we want to make sure that we got our, our DB coach evaluations on DBs that we're recruiting. We want to make sure those are in the book, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you just do what you do in more detail and higher level. And, and, and um, you know, hopefully that all comes together, um, you know, and creates a good product that, again, furthers the cause, furthers the cause of winning, man. All right. All right. That's good stuff. It's good stuff. I had a question for you before. I mean, because we're getting up here on time. I know I'll get you back to work for sure on this Friday. Uh, but, uh, you know, I get this a lot from young guys trying to break through into the industry, right? And um, it's a mofo, by the way. <laughs> now, what was that? It's a mofo breaking into this industry. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it is. And it's, and it's how do you separate yourself and how do you meet the right people and how do you network to that point and things like that? And I guess, you know, it, it's, it's not the same, but there's probably still some things to take from it. I mean, again, back to your story, right? You didn't, you didn't necessarily play uh, college football. I mean, you, had, you were trying to go there to be a long snapper and that turned into a scholarship that helped, but then you had to do something during those years that separated yourself, that made you, that made people, you know, want to continue to give you a shot in the right. industry. And I guess what you know if, if you're talking to somebody out there and, and you're and you're talking about getting into this industry and, and separating yourself and what that looks like i mean how do you draw on your experiences and what do you look at you know from your time and, and what kind of wisdom do you kind of pass on mm -hmm. down well, that's a, I, I think that's a great question uh i think what what for, is for me was two things i i think there are two types of people out there in this world that like become can become successful those like people that are highly ambitious and they have this really like targeted plan if i do this and if i meet this guy then you know I, and you know i'm gonna like i don't want to say you know you know i want to kiss up to this guy or whatever and, and i'm gonna follow this guy because 
I just, you, if you treat everybody well and you work hard and you're honest about what you do, that stands the test of time to me. And, um, you know, I look around college football now and, you know, now that I'm getting older and I let, I, you know, I, I could consider myself friends with, with a lot of head coaches that were assistant coaches somehow that I worked with through the years. And I consider them friends because whether you were the hot coach at the time or whether you were, you know, whatever, I, you know, you treat everyone the same and you work hard and you don't lie to people. That's the best thing that you can do. Sure. The chips fall where they fall. Like you, you get lucky. Some people, you know, there's a lot of really good people that would love to be doing this. They're probably way better than I am. Sure. And they just didn't get the opportunity, you know? Um, and so all you can do is if, if there is an opportunity and, and is, is just be yourself. The cool thing now is that you don't have to be like an outgoing, really super dynamic personality to be a recruiter anymore, right? There are, there are backroom jobs. There are personnel like jobs that are out there, but then you can be the other side, right? You can be a huge personality and people love to be around you and you can be more geared toward the recruiting side. Yep. So there's a few more opportunities, but, but yeah, just being yourself, being honest, working hard. That's, yeah. that's all you can do. It is a little bit. I mean, it is, I mean, I think cause being a good person, like you said, being authentic is a big part of it. We'd be, I'd be lying to you if we said, and like you said, luck is a little bit of it, right? Like my wife's, she was my wife, my girlfriend's brother, just so happened to be a track coach at Vanderbilt who introduced me to James Franklin and his staff. Right. And so that yeah. led me from being a high school teacher into college football. Right. And so like, right. it's a little luck. Right. But then from there, what do you do with that luck? Right. And how do yeah. you, and that, that comes back to, like you said, being a good person, working hard and things like that. But yeah, yeah it is a mofo. Like you said, yeah, it's a mofo. <laughs> and the key is, guys, do never forget. And that's what I'm saying. Like don't ever play favorites because you never know what coach up and down that hallway is going to be a head coach someday. Jeez, you know? I mean, our quarterback when we were there is the head coach of the Bengals now, you know? <laughs> like, you Zach Taylor know. was the quarterback when we were there. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, and again, that's another guy, Clinton, you're probably the same way. Like, if I if we could call up Zach Taylor and, and say what's up, he's an easygoing guy. Amazing. You know, great guy, you know, and – uh, beautiful, lovely wife that that was on. Who worked a, in the office yeah, with Sarah. Office here, <laughs> there, and, and, Whose uh, dad uh, is Sherman? Yeah. And was the head coach of the yeah, Packers? Sure. Yeah. Head coach of Texas A and M. Like, but he's a great example of that too on the coaching side. Like, if you met Zach Taylor, like he was like as humble and as nice of a dude as there is out there. You would never have known like that he was the player of the year in the conference. You know. You would never have known that, man. And he just treated everybody well. Everybody. And, and um, you know, I, that's why that, that's cool. It's really it's something I'm proud of that I was able to be part of, like, his recruiting process here because he's done so such cool things. But, again, that goes back to the same thing. Good dude that works hard, is honest, and just treats everyone well. And a big-time competitor. <laughs> yeah. And then it, it helps if you're, like, freakishly smart, too. Right? Yes, yes, that does mm -hmm. help. Um, yeah. well, uh, I know, we're, I know you got work to do. Uh, let's finish with this. Just, uh, what can we expect from Nebraska and recruiting and stuff coming up? I've seen you guys been getting a lot more in, in Illinois, which is cool to see, mm -hmm. uh, because I've always thought that, uh, you know, you should have a footprint here, you know, yeah. Illinois, one of those States where kids will kind of go anywhere. Um, you did a good job. You landed, what's his name? Uh, my guy from Kenwood, uh, Tate, or uh, they've got so many kids. I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, oh, Jaleel. Yeah. Um, who who I think is going to be a great player. You, you did a good job evaluating him. Uh, you know, I saw Mickey Joseph over at Kenwood Academy the other day. So you know, you guys are making your presence felt here. Yeah. Um, you know, what else? What else can we look forward to? I think you just look to the Huskers. Is you know, we we want to do a great job recruiting around you know this area we want to do a great job recruiting around um you know we call it the radius you know the footprint around here um you know but i just think you, you look for us to to we're going to be targeting a certain type of kid that we think can come in here and, and be successful 
at Nebraska and fits our mold. Um, you know, we've got a dynamic group of coaches, you know, a bunch of new coaches here. So it's cool because you got guys that have been here for four or five years and then you got guys that this is their first year, right? And they're kind of coming together. So I think um, we've signed some some really, really talented uh, guys through the portal that I think will, will help. I think Nebraska is going to open a lot of eyes this year. I really do. I think we've got we've got some a really good group of returners coming back. We've got some young guys that will be able to contribute from this last class. And I just think you see Nebraska continuing to try to to try to um, build ourselves through tough, hardworking kids that can fit the mold here, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I just think about this as we're getting ready to part, though. I would, it got, we're almost going to have to have you back because I would love to sit there. I could sit there and talk to you a little bit more about just the evolution of, of Nebraska recruiting over the years, right? Going right. from how they how they've had to change their kind of philosophy over the years and what they used to be able to do 20 you know years ago to where they are today and right. how they continue to be oh, competitive. Man. I mean, I would love to sit here and pick your brain for another well, I'll do 20, it 30 I'll minutes. Do, so, you know, we can, I'll do this as, as much as I have time for it. You just let me know. Dude, I, I, I would love, I would love to, because I like, I feel like I'm only scratching the surface and I don't know if it's because of our relationship mm -hmm. from, from roommates to you being at Wisconsin to Oregon state to Baylor to now, and then just all the connections in between, you know, Aranda Bush, my dad, we're all at LSU together. And then, yep. You know, you end up with, uh, you know, Aranda again. And then, you know, back at Nebraska uh, with Donovan Real as your new yeah. line coach, who we were freshmen together at Wisconsin. Like, we're going to have know. to talk about that. I'm going to want some, a lot of information. Oh, no, 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 no. You uh, don't even, don't, don't even start. That, that would not be good information. <laughs> we lived in the dorms together. So. Oh, man. I can only imagine there. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, no, but it was great. And I'm glad that, you know, it's cool, you know, Eric, to spend some, you know, to get to, to spend some time with you. I, I do look forward to doing this again. And for sure. And, you know, that's like we talked about, man, the camaraderie that comes along with this. And, and, and this is a, a, as much as, as it's challenging and, and time consuming, you know, it's still something that we all love and we're passionate about. And I'm, I would love to keep talking and sharing that passion with you guys. So. Yeah, no, awesome. that'd be awesome. Um, well, as we part, uh, Coach Coach's Corner podcast, uh, Vince Ginta, you can see his Twitter handle right there. Follow him. Uh, it's my amazing. brother's birthday today, Al Louie. Remember Al Louie? Oh, it's birthday. Al Louie's birthday? Al Louie, shout out to Al Louie. 20 oh, shout out to Al Louie. Where's Al Louie at? Is he like 30 now? He's 28 years old. Salt no, Lake. I was like being sarcastic when I said that. Yeah. Yeah, I posted a picture of him on the sidelines at a Husker game 16 oh, years ago. Uh, um, I'm gonna wow. Hey, go um, read like a, go read, you know, go what do they call it? Retweet it. I, <laughs> I will. I will. I miss Al Louie, man. Oh, he's turned into quite the character, man. He's he's a dude now. Where's he living? He lives in Salt Lake City. Has his own spot up in a nice part of town, and got a beautiful girlfriend, and she's no awesome, and. Yeah, life is good for Al Louie. He grew up on us, Clint. Wow. Happy birthday, Al Louie. Yeah. And uh, as we part, Amy says hi. Um, oh, I, love it. And, I can't uh, wait to see Amy again. We gotta do yeah, it. I know. Yeah. We got to figure this out. Uh, I don't know if we could do a, another week in a houseboat. Uh, I don't think you'd want me around your kids uh, that long yeah, either. No, I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> we get you to Lincoln to, to come to a game this fall for sure. Yeah, That's no, I, I would love to. Eric, we'll go down there. That will be our, our first yeah, live. Because the corner's going on the road. We are taking yeah, it on the road. So we're taking it so. go on the road. We keep pushing yeah. that. Yeah, yep. do it. So awesome, awesome, man. Great catching up. Thank you yeah, so much. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Coach's Corner, episode number four with Vince Ginta. Coming soon. All right. We'll see you, man. All right. Have a good day, boys.